What is up, YouTube? Janky you here. My name is Michael, and I was busy yesterday, but while I was busy yesterday, I know I uploaded videos and all that, but those were all pre-recorded. Uh, but, anyway, uh, while I was busy yesterday, the cards, the imports came out and were spoiled and shown because some content creators got to open boxes, maybe they were sponsored by Konami, or maybe they weren't, I don't know, I don't watch a lot of other Yu-Gi-Oh! content creators, if I'm being honest, but anyway, let's jump into it. So the first up is, uh, proof of, uh, Frufloss, level 3 dark fiend effect monster, 100 attack, 100 defense, if you control no special summoned monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand, also you cannot special summon other monsters for the rest of this turn. You can only use this effect of proof of proof laws once per turn. If this normal or special summon, you can immediately, after this effect resolves, tribute summon one monster. This card's terrible. <laughs> the, the only deck that are going to use it are like, not even table 500 decks. They're like, Table a thousand. Like, bottom of the bottom. Alright, are gonna use this card. And it's awful. Uh, but, but Jake Yu-Gi-Oh! You can use it in Monarchs. Guess what? Monarchs don't need it. So they're terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Moving on. Thrawn of the Discipled Angel. Is a level 4 Earth Fairy Effect monster with 1500 attack and 600 defense. If a monster that was originally Earth Fairy is sent from your hand or field to the graveyard, except during damage step, you can special summon this card. And it's a hard once per turn. So this one isn't as bad. Um, if you link summon with a Earth Fairy, you can special summon it. And it's kind of like a play extender. Because it also is from, uh, but yeah, it's just like a play extender. Um, it's not bad, and I believe, uh, a while ago, I'm pretty sure I covered Ishizu's deck. Like, Ishizu was getting, like, a lot of her cards were staying, like, to come out, and they're Earth Fairies, specifically. So if you're playing, like, that deck, um... I think it's only OCG. I'm not sure if the cards came out in the TCG yet, but that this card kind of fits in with that strategy because that deck cared about Earth Fairies as well. But moving on, a uh, decent card overall. Pin Transaction is a level, or not level, a rank 4 Cybers Effect monster. 2,000 attack, 1,000 defense, and it's any two level 4 monsters to make it. So... It's, um, it's okay. <laughs> or it's generic. So, detach one material from this card. If you have more cards in your extra deck than your opponent, apply these effects in sequence depending on the difference. One or more. This card gains 1,000 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. Five or more. Neither player can target this card with card effects until, uh, the end of your opponent's turn. 10 or more, you can banish a card your opponent controls. And 15 or more, you can make your opponent's life points 3,000. So, how do you get all these effects? One or more is pretty easy. Having one more card than your opponent in your extra deck, that can be easily done if you're going second. Same thing with 5 or more. 10 or more, that'd be very... Uh, hard to get but it's technically is possible 15 or more is very 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 hard um and you would require you to play pendulums but what are the goods good thing about this card it can be a 3000 beat stick and then that that sometimes is enough to get over problematic cards it can also not be targeted uh, with card effects until your opponent's turn sometimes. That's also good. And the 10 or plus more cannot, or doesn't target, so you just banish a card. 
And that's also very good. The only issue is, is that getting the 10 effect, even getting the 5 effect, seems a little bit difficult um, in most matchups. 5 or more, like I said, that's actually pretty doable. Uh, it just depends on matchups and all that. And it, if you were to throw this in any uh, rank 4 deck, 5 or more depends on matchup. 1 or more is pretty easy in general. Like, 1 or more you're probably going to get a lot of the time. Alright, we're going to move on. Unex or not unexpected die. That's the... That's a different card. Expendable die. Normal trap card. Tribute 1 warrior monster, then target 1 card on the field. Destroy it, and if you do, draw a card. This card's a little too late to the thing. Um, this would have been fine... When um, Gemini Spark was a thing. So Gemini Spark was in Hero B. And Gemini Spark, it says you send or tribute a Gemini monster to destroy one card on the field. And then draw a card. So this is a trap version of that specifically for warrior monsters. Uh, Gemini Spark has been power crept out for a while. And that was a quick play spell card. So it had more uses. This one is a trap card, and unless you're, unless they come out with a warrior deck that specifically cares about trap cards and being tributed, I don't see this card seeing any play. But it is a nice shout out, uh, like callback. Next up, Terrors of the Underroot is a normal trap card. You can target up to five cards in your opponent's graveyard and the same number of your opponent's banished cards. Banish the cards from the graveyard, and then you return the banished targets to the graveyard. The issue with this card is they have to have cards in the banished zone in the first place. Not a lot of decks can do that. Um, banishing cards from the graveyard could be useful and relevant and good disruption. Um, if you're going like first in a mirror match, or not a mirror match, but in like a this is a this would be a decent side deck card if it wasn't for the fact that you need. To have your opponent have banished cards in the first place. So yeah. Um, you can get that with DD Crow. But. DD Crow does what this trap card is going to do overall better anyway. Because most of the time when your opponent's going to. You know try to get cards from their graveyard. And all that. DD Crow it's only like one card. And DD Crow is going to do that. So. Overall. Um, kind of. Kind of lackluster. Next up, we got the War Rocks. So let's get into these. War Rock Wento. I like the I like the art. Good old green haired bow archer. Neat. Uh, level four Earth Warrior effect. Eighteen hundred attack. Eighteen hundred defense. Good stats. If your Earth Warrior monster battles an opponent's monster during damage calculation, quick effect. You can pay a hundred life points. Your battling monster gains 800 attack until the end of this turn. If this card is sent from your monster zone to give your by opponent's card effect, you can special summon one level 5 or higher rock monster from your hand or deck. And and you can only use each effect once per turn. Um, This just seems like something out of 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh! It, it seems like it, it has unnecessary downsides. Um, one, it has to be by an opponent's card effect. Can't be by battle. Second, it has to actually be sent to the graveyard. That is actually a downside in some cases. And the first effect doesn't seem to matter most of the time like paying 800 life points getting over something uh that's an okay effect to have on a card don't get me wrong but it, it just feels like this card has too many unnecessary restrictions uh for modern day Yu-Gi-Oh. like if this side uh, if it was destroyed by your opponent's card you special summon it it'd just be a good card but i still wouldn't think it'd be broken because it as long as it had this hard once per turn effect right here uh, so if it just was opponent's card and not card effect, it would be fine. But they tacked on that, and it has to be sent to the graveyard as well. Uh, the war, 
the War Rock monsters, as far as this one goes, is probably one of the better ones. Uh, War Rocks, no offense to any War Rock uh, fans out there, but they're pretty weak and lackluster in terms of uh, power. But if you like them, then, you know, by all means, play your heart out. Next up, War Rock Mamud. Mammoth. Reference to Mammoth. Level 5, Earth Warrior Effect, 2000 attack, 2000 defense. If you control no monsters or all monsters, you control our warriors. You can normal summon this card without tributing. Hey, that's not bad. I mean, it's not bad because, you know, you, having level 5 monsters without this kind of thing sucks. Uh, it would be better to special summon itself. But anyway, if your earth monster, uh, warrior monster battles during damage calculation, you can target a spell or trap, destroy it, then all war rock monsters gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. See, that's kind of like what they all do, is that they're like, oh, if you meet a condition, all your monsters gain, like, 200 attack. Once again, this feels more like out of, like, 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh!, in 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh!, this deck probably would have been a decent deck, but this feels like, a, just feels like one from a different era, you know? Uh, it feels like an old deck that is getting support, new support, rather than a brand new deck. Um, it's it's good that it can summon itself without tributing, so it's uh, so it's not a brick. It's bad because um, it doesn't have enough attack to get over a lot of things. It requires to destroy a spell or a trap card to get its 200 attack boost. Overall, once again, War Rocks, pretty lackluster. War Rack, uh, Meteor Ragon is our next card. Level 7 Earth Warrior Effect. 2600 attack, 2600 defense, and a wall of text. So, first effect, cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. That's pretty good. When an attack is declared involving this card and an opponent's monster, you can negate the effects of that opponent's monster, as well as activate effects and effects on the field of the monster with the same name. Once per turn, during a battle phase in which your Earth monster, Warrior Monster battles, quick effect, you can make all uh, War Rock monsters you currently control gain 200 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. Also, this card can make up to two attacks on monster during each battle phase this turn. Okay. Good things about this card. It's on, it like negates everything your opponent does. When it attacks. So, if you can special summon this card, uh, you can get over things like uh, the Mac, the Mech Knight uh, Abermax. As long as you can, you know, boost its attack up high enough. Because it'll negate its effects when it attacks. That's a good thing. The problem is, it doesn't have a way to summon itself. And yes, there are cards that summon it. Like the uh, level 4 we talked about earlier. But once again... They added on a lot of, like, stipulations and stuff to it. Uh, and on top of that, like, there probably are more ways to summon it. Um, I don't remember a lot of the War Rock cards, if I'm being honest. I just remembered every single one of them. When I was like, eh. Like, meh. Like, they don't really make a strong impression. Um, overall. Uh, but as for this card, uh, it does a lot of good. And it's only real downside is that it doesn't have a way to summon itself. Um, other than that, it's a fine card. Uh, it has protection. It has negation to get over stuff by battle. Because War Rocks are all about uh, battle, the battle phase. And then uh, it also makes all your War Rocks like, bigger. Like all the other ones do, almost most of the War Rocks, you know, increase by 200. And the idea is that since all of them increase by the attack by like two to 300, you can, um, you eventually get over stuff. 
But even if you have like five monsters, unfortunately, that's only an extra thousand attack. But this card can also attack twice on monsters, so yeah. Uh, overall, not bad. None of the effects are hard once per turns either. Um, this is a once per turn, but if you had multiple of these out, uh, it would still trigger. Each one could trigger, so it's still not a bad... Uh, it's not a bad card, it's just a little bit uh, unfortunate that it doesn't have a way to summon itself by modern Yu-Gi-Oh! standards. So yeah, uh, next up is War Rock Dignity. Quick play spell, you must control a war rock to activate these effects. When a monster your opponent controls activates effects, negate that effect. That's pretty good. During the battle phase, when your opponent activates the spell, trap or monster effect, negate that effect. That's also really, really good. Uh, so, this is the best card in the archetype in terms of uh, support. So far, uh, this card negates stuff. Granted, it's at a spell speed 2. So, it doesn't negate uh, everything. You can't, like, use it to negate a counter trap activated in the battle phase. Uh, but, you can still use it to, act, to negate most things that are going to be an issue. So, that's fine. Uh, overall, uh, if you're playing War Rocks, you know, maybe you just like the deck don't really care about competitiveness, that's fine. Um, this is definitely a card you should probably play three of. Next up, War Rock Spirit. During the battle phase, you can target one War Rock in your graveyard. Special summon and activate one of the follow effects. You can special summon in attack position, but for the rest of the turn, it's effects negated, and it cannot attack directly. Special summon that target in defense position. Also, the first time each War Rock... Monster you control would be destroyed by battle. It is not. Man. Why? Why does it have this? Or, I guess, this right here. If it was just this part right here. It would be fine. It'd be a great card. Uh, it would help facilitate the plan. Heck, you know what? Heck, if it just had, you know, the downside of it can't attack directly, but you still, uh, you know, it would still be fine. Because you summon the monster back at the start of the battle phase. That one attacks over one of their monsters. And then uh, gets an attack boost, gets its effects and stuff like that. You could summon back, this could summon back the level uh, 7. And then it would have all of its effects and it would be great. The issue is, is this card is, uh, its defense position thing is uh, the better effect. Because, you know, they can't be destroyed by battle for the first time. And, yeah. Uh, this seems like it, they want you to be a defensive card, or on, or an off offensive card, uh, English. But the problem is with the offensive thing is that uh, the War Rocks are pretty, they have mediocre effects. But, you know, their effects are still necessary <laughs> for the deck to function. And even negating one of them kind of is meh. And uh, before you guys say anything, I know that they kind of buff each other and everything when you fight. But, you know. Woo. But when compared to having even one of their effects negated, as someone who's played against this, I've only played against this deck like once or twice. But every time I played against it, even negating one of their effects really puts the deck behind. For, like, for some inexplicable reason. Um, so, having that said that, this card right here, this, if the effects are negated, it's like actually a pretty big downside. But we're going to move on from this card. Um, you're still probably going to play it because it's a monster reborn for the archetype, but they're just, it seems like they're just putting unnecessary restrictions on this deck. Next up, War Rock Generations. It's a normal trap card during the battle phase. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, special summon a 
War Rock Monster from your deck, and if you activated this card during your opponent's turn for the rest of the turn, while you control the face of special summon monster, your opponent monsters cannot attack except attack that monster. Okay. Um. This isn't that bad. I so I actually like this card. I like this card because it throws out the uh, level seven earlier pretty easily. Um. And you don't really have to, and it, it doesn't have any two, like, downside. It has a upside for playing it defensively rather than a downside, rather than, um, and rather than have just a downside for playing it offensively. The offense, you can play this offensively, like, you know, oh, you set this card, and then if you're, Opponent, if you don't need to activate this on your opponent's turn to stay alive, you activate this on your turn to push for OTK or push or push for game. So it doesn't have this downside of negating its effects. It doesn't have the downside of it can't attack the monster can't attack directly. This is basically what that quick play spell card should have been. Summon the monster in attack position. And that's and then that's it. It's a hard one to return. This is what this kind of effect idea, except for you know not source from the deck but from the graveyard, uh, for this quick play spell should have been for the summoning attack thing. The no no effects negated, no attack, no it can't attack directly, and everything like that. But if you need it for defense, you can. Uh, that's kind of what this card should. That's kind of what the quick play spell card should have been like. But anyway, let's move on to. Uh, War Rock, Big Blue, which is the last card on uh, that we're going to talk about today. During the main phase, if a face-up War Rock monster you control leaves the battlefield, find opponent's card effect, destroy up to two cards your opponent controls. You can only activate one War Rock Big Blue per turn. Okay, so... That's not the worst card. It just, once again, it seems a little situational. Um, I mean, sure, they can pop cards and stuff like that. That's not too hard to do. And this card doesn't target. That's another good thing it has going for it. Uh, most, a decent amount of decks have the ability to destroy cards and everything like that the issue and destroy monsters and stuff like that while they're going through the thing my issue with this card is that a lot of cards uh a lot of time if your opponent is going through their thing and they're gonna pop cards because most time that they're playing cards they don't pop monsters specifically but they pop um any card on the field, they're going to go for your back row because your War Rocks don't really have uh, good enough effects to really pop most of them. Or, you know, get rid of. Unless they really need to get over a few things and you have enough War Rocks on the field to gain, to have them all gain, like a, to have one that, you know, gain a thousand attack. But overall... And the fact this has to be uh, during the main phase is also kind of um, kind of like a dumb restriction in my opinion. If it was just if a face up mon rock monster is deleted the field by an opponent's card effect, you can destroy up to two cards your opponent controls, uh, and then has the hard ones per turn. It would it would still be a pretty mediocre card, but it would certainly be a lot better. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. You can tell me if you disagree with me on the War Rocks. Uh, personally, I just feel like they're a little bit lacking. Um, with the exception of War Rock Dignity, this card is actually pretty good uh, and all that. So, you tell me what you think in the comment section below. If it's your birthday today, happy birthday. If you want to send me any cool deck profiles or replays, maybe you could show me. You know, the War Rocks doing their thing and prove me wrong. 
My email is in the description. I would love to see it. And of course, and as always, have a wonderful day.